Okay, so I'm just starting this portrait and it's always very difficult to know where to begin. So I'm just gonna begin and I'm beginning with the shadows. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to do a grisaille on this one, but I'm gonna do it possibly similarly to how Bougereau might have done it. Um, doing a sort of, you know, like a first coat and then glazing into that with a second coat. So I'm not glazing over grisaille. I've no idea what this is, but we'll just put it on. Um, it's best just, it's just a guess. So I'm looking for the right balance of um, warm and cool. It is, I must say, it's quite, it's fairly dark, but I'm, I'm going straight in with the whites as well. That looks quite gray when I start to mix that. I need to warm it. A little bit of that, there's so much going on in this color. So many different colors working together. So you can see that just, you know, a touch of yellow. I don't know what that did. That just helped soften it. So yeah, we'll just we'll just go around. I mean, I guess I've just got to block this in, and I'll work into it in a while. I can't tell if it's too dark or not. When I'm looking at the reference, um, as I said, it's very very high contrast. I'm sure it needs a bit of blue just to cool it just a little bit I still haven't worked out the best format with palettes and everything here so all I know is that actually when it goes moves into the hair it's it's very close and it's very very dark the hair is black but so squinting one's eyes this value and that are quite similar so I don't know if this is too light still Now I did oil out before I began, so the, the canvas does have some, um, some sort of moisture on it. And I'm oiling out just with the medium that I'm using, which is, uh, it's actually water-based linseed oil, um, which is really good, I like that. And then uh, because I'm just having difficulties trying to get paints to dry, I did put in a few, good few drops, probably I don't know, it's this much, and I put in, um, I don't know, 10 drops of uh, the Walnut Alkid, which I find you have to be very careful with, because if you do too much, then um, suddenly the surface becomes resistant to any other paint, even the same stuff. Even, even if it's thinned with Walnut Alkid later, it's just so hard when it dries, when it goes off. So, anyway... Who knows what's going on? It's pink as well. Just a little bit pink. Just ever such a slight amount of medium there. And then it starts to lighten. I'm just, I'm, you can see I just use the tiniest amounts I don't tend to mix um, all of the colours in one go. It's just not how I was taught, so I, I just can't do it. I just tend to just dive straight in. There's a shadow. this stage there's always there's just so much to do it's you know a challenge not to just become overwhelmed by it and um just yeah just stick with it it starts to make more sense immediately actually 
So this is almost like a what I came to understand was called a bistra, which is, um, you know, so you can still see through it. You've got this, the texture of, the, I'm using a hog's hair brush and it's got quite a nice sort of translucent quality. Bistra is normally done with just a few colours like burnt umber. And then you, you build up the whole painting. I will do a video of that process. And I was tempted to do a limited palette um, of this with uh, this portrait. But what I'll do is I'll start with this because this is kind of what I know. And it's just how I would normally paint a portrait with this palette of, you know, white, cadmium yellow, pale, and then um, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue. I've got the sap green. And uh, for this one, because I thought the hair, there's a lot of hair and it's quite dark. Um, so I put some burnt umber in just for good measure because I can mix up the colour of the hair with the other colours, but I'll just end up using those and those of paint. So I might as well just go straight in. I put a bit of extra ultramarine blue on so that I've got enough for that because around here it's really dark <coughs> when it goes into the hair and it's much darker here too. We're going to try again just we need a bit more colour on the palette. And that's a lot of green so I'm going back in with crimson. Crimson's a much better colour for the shadows I learned that from Louis Smith, who has a, an excellent course up at the Manchester Academy of Art. And I went for a weekend there and learned glazing with him back in the day. It's just really not right. I don't know what it is. It's just it's more crimson. But it's cooler and it does need white just to settle it somehow it's sort of almost too sharp otherwise as a value too too dark I don't know what the white does it just softens it so, so just neutralizes it what I'm doing is looking for something that will be darker here under the jawline there's an earring here I'm going to paint, but not yet. Sometimes things, details like that can get in the way sometimes. So, it's not looking bad. It's an equivalent, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just something, something to go with. I think it's quite dark, actually. Uh, what happens is on the jawline, the way it's lit, it starts... It's a bit reckless that um, just the, it reflects the light from below from, from I think her dress so, so it's kind of the same it's quite a warm view and it gets lighter I was a bit yeah that was just a bit too much paint just chucked on the palette Just always a bit conscious of time, so I try not to rush. But yeah, let's see, that's something. And then with that, I can see that that's sort of similar and will work up here somewhere. And then actually, this isn't that dark. There's there's a bit of shape to the chin as well, which I'll, I'll sort out, model in a while. Um, so that's something. And then actually, even though this is a lot lighter, it's, it's roughly this, it's got more yellow in, but I'll just, I'll put this in for now. shape of the brow so this is just something I do I will put some 
Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of yellow. When I find something that works, that sort of works, gives me a bit of confidence. And um, so then I'll go around, I can just see that, you know, there's actually there's more colour than this. But I can just use that to, um, for similar areas. So you find that as my paintings build up, they're sort of, they become quite patchy. I can looking around there's the similarities and they might not be right but that's okay we're just going to stick with it and see where we go and then it will all just um, hopefully just fall into place in a bit there's a, there's a magical moment where suddenly you know when I paint the background you know will really bring forward the lights the lights are very light and they're very close to this so it's just a really really light pink so just already building this transition which is, is sharp around the cheekbone Think, you know that's going to be higher but it's, it's definitely a sort of sharp line there so I suppose you know because it's a good equivalent then it just ends up being <coughs> you know almost a limited palette in itself you know I'm not using so many colours and um, I could just easily go around and just add white to this mix and then you know pretty much carry on and finish it so what is what's interesting is you know this is where painting is like alchemy you just i'm looking for something that suits me when i i've rubbed in the oil i've rubbed it really really gently and i mean that's actually a bit too wet but i was i was gonna say you know it's it's just right it's what i want and some people might want it a bit more liquid some people might want it drier but this is something that we find you know as we keep guessing we keep working you know you will find what works for us it's like it's a signature that we can use or a signature it's not it just reflects our sensibility which is why um it's part of me doesn't like everyone learning to draw in the same way I don't like it that's fine to learn to draw of course but you know if everyone's work ends up looking the same I just don't know if that's really natural and I think we need to find a way you know when they teach drawing we need to, people need to find a way to allow students to express themselves as in the same way that everyone's handwriting is different sort of control we can control handwriting to an extent yeah we can learn we learn how to write but when you look at everyone's handwriting even if they've been molded in the same way they still it still reflects their life somehow um so yeah i'm just making this a bit lighter When Buddhist monks used to pray for their disciples, they would ask um, the disciples to send them their own name written in their own handwriting. And I believe that, you know, that actually is an embodiment of that person, of that individual, which is why they asked for it. So it's like the real individual is there with the person, but it's just inscribed on a piece of paper.
I mean, it just so happens that I, I don't know what I was expecting to do really, but I'm sort of, it's, it's happening. I can't really stop it. I'm just gonna. sort of waiting and then I was going to do that later but it's always sort of beginning to, to fit a little bit so I've got this paint on um, that brush so I'll grab another I really need to get some more brushes I've got this this is another sort of hog's hair so what I'm going to do is um, go back into the darks because the nose wasn't finished so this like slightly cooler and this cooler a bit, this cooler mix will be good going into the neck, which it becomes, it's almost purple. bit dark but it feels right for up here I don't like that brush not this other one this is it's got a bit more spring to it this one dragging off the medium always thinking about the drawing I mean, I suppose I don't, you know, I always say I don't have to worry too much because I've got a second chance with the next glaze. But this will, it's going to start to come together. Right, so it's just, it's too wet. So I'm going to just go back into it. It's quite a sort of purpley colour, so I can possibly soften that adding a bit of green, which is going to neutralize the red. So the weird thing is about just above the nostril, you've got these, this will appear lighter than the actual nostril when I've painted the nostril. But at the moment, and it should appear lighter. This is quite dark around here. So I don't know, I probably need a smaller brush for that. Looking at it, it's just the right colour for the lower lid here. And even the iris, even the eyeball itself. I've just got to be careful. I was, I was really careful with the drawing because, um, yeah, I mean, you can see I used a, a grid. I can do it without a grid, but this is just all because of time constraints but the point is to get to a place where you feel completely happy with it and to check it and triple check it that's not really right that's too cool there but we'll leave it
change that with a bit of red. What I'm trying to do is emphasize the strength of this shadow. So I can work back into that, that's okay. This is quite, uh, it's just dark, so um, that will do. So just bearing in mind that I've checked the drawing, I've been over it quite a few times, so I can just be confident as, as just as at this stage just to stick with it and then we'll be all right. smaller brush so I'm just going to use some of that to make it just a tiny bit lighter because the nostril is I don't want to lose the drawing these are the same value so I'm going to lose the drawing if I'm not careful so I'm going to mix up something that is the right depth, the, one of the darkest areas. Yeah, you know, I mean, then I nearly lost the drawing there. You know, it's okay, you can correct it, but you're sort of wasting your time. Why, oh, no one wants to do that. Let's get my mile stick back wherever that is. Mile stick is the stick that you see if you so you lean it up and then you can rest on it. I do like just drawing um, just with the, the weight of the wrist but um, when it's really fine detail you need something some support. reason why yeah just to stress to be you know being really careful is that um you know it will just affect the whole tone of the painting the whole mood um everything the emotion um just just the most subtle line you know the most subtle emphasis here or there so you just got to be really careful It's dark enough, that's going to work around there. So the eyeball, um, it's not exactly this this colour, but it is this value and it's, it's in shadow. So I'm just so I've got something there before that I placed before and it's wet so I can just model it. And this isn't correct the correct colour. I've got to be careful about the drawing. It's gonna be there's gonna be more green in there. I'm just I just dragged it across 
The trouble is with the patches, um, it's, you know, they need to be modelled together. So, uh, it just, yeah. It's just, that's just time. You know, you can do that. That's no problem. So it's just spending a bit more time, but this is just for an example. And that was darker. And then it all sort of moulds into one. I do have this brush still. Um, but I think I want this on all of this. So that moves across just under the fold of the eyelids. Going to drag them into each other because you've we've got the um, you know the two colours so just to avoid too much patchiness so then I can bring this one back up and join the two. You know, with the drawing, um, because we're all, we're concentrating really hard, you you can just let that slip and just say, oh, just uh, you know, I'm not I'm not even going to check. I'm just going to do it, and then it, you know, it's not my. We've got to really, it's a struggle to really give it everything in every moment. And that's why after yeah, after doing these um, videos, sometimes I'm just completely wiped, wiped out. just saw the ear and put some yellow in yellow somehow sort of just increases the warmth this is dark but um, possibly that's too light it needs to I just need to find that this with that value 